Many years ago, there was a story that came from the Reuters News Service about a family of ducklings that fell down a sewer grate in Vancouver. The mother duck did what any responsible parent would do. She got help from a passing police officer. The mother duck grabbed the policeman by the pant leg while he was on foot patrol. The policeman shoved what he thought was just a goofy duck away, but she persisted. She grabbed his leg again when he tried to leave. And then she waddled to, to a nearby sewer grate and she sat down and waited for him to follow her. The policeman came to where she sat and saw eight little baby ducklings in the water below. So the policeman removed the heavy metal gate with the help of a tow truck and used a vegetable strainer to lift the ducklings to safety. Mother and offspring then departed for a nearby pond. That mother duck did just what the Canaanite woman did. She persisted in getting the help she needed until she got it. This story has held an important place in the life of the Christian church. The Clementine homilies, which were composed in the late second century, went so far as to name the woman Eusta and her daughter as Bernice. The story was used during a time in which membership in the church was still being debated to solidify the position of Gentiles or non-Jews within the early Christian church. But this story is important to us now because it exemplifies an important aspect of who we understand God to be. Regardless of who you are or where you come from, no matter what your academic credentials or your ethnic background, you can ask Jesus for help and God will help you. And it doesn't matter if you come to church every week, if you are baptized or confirmed, rich or poor, whether or not you tithe, God will help you. But here's the thing. You have to know what you want. The Canaanite woman came to Jesus with a clear request. She needed help for her daughter. She wanted her daughter to be healed. That was her single prayer, her sole focus. But that clarity enabled her to focus her energy onto that desire. I don't know about you, but these last five months, my prayer has been about as focused as any I have had in my adult life. And that prayer, that overarching concern, has been to keep this church and my family safe. I wear a mask, I wash my hands, but I am relentless about making sure that those around me do so too. It has been almost exactly four months since any person outside my immediate household has been in my home, and that includes my adult son. I have been clear with the staff at the church people coming to worship, even children in this parish, that I do not want anyone taking chances at Christ Church. I know that I've hurt some people's feelings. I have certainly risked alienating some relationships, but I believe with every cell in my body that this is not a time to be careless with my health, or with the health of any member of our community. You have to know what you want, and you have to believe that it's important enough 
to risk making yourself and others a little uncomfortable. The second thing you need is not to be discouraged. How many ideas or prayers have we had only to encounter a roadblock and say, oh well, I guess that just wasn't meant to be. Jesus actually says no to the Canaanite woman and he insults her by calling her a dog. By the way, some scholars say that the word is actually better translated as puppy than dog. But we all know an insult when we hear it. But despite all that, she's not discouraged. She doesn't internalize the insult. She knows that the health of her daughter is important. She knows that her cause is much more important than her feelings. In the fall of 2018, Christ Church first began to host the homeless shelter here. I began to get to know the community of those 30 homeless men and women who were living with us. I shared meals with them. Many began attending worship on Sunday morning. Several began coming to me for counseling. What struck me was their optimism. Substance abuse, chronic unemployment, illness, abusive relationships, all these things could have stopped someone from having hope. But by continuing to put one foot in front of another, I watched as these folks' life changed. I don't know how many of you had the chance to see Hudson River Housing's winter event, Evening at the Fall Kill. It happened online this year. And during it, they showed the opening of Fall Kill Commons you may have passed it. It's on Rose Street, just off of Main Street, a little past the underwear factory. It's a beautiful new two buildings that house almost 80 units of new, clean, beautiful housing. It opened in March. Well, at this year's event, they showed a film of the people moving in in March to their new homes. And I was watching as these folks moved into these beautiful new one bedroom apartments. And there, moving in, were two of the couples from our homeless shelter. 18 months later, their faith, their hope, their determination paid off. And they finally had a new place to call their own forever. Great is your faith, Jesus says to the woman that St. Clement called Eusta. And that is just what Jesus wants us to be. Be persistent in getting the help that you need. Do not be intimidated by authority figures who would stand in your way. Make sure that your cause is just and important and that it has the kind of overarching gravitas that will help you stay focused when you are most tempted to be discouraged. And remember, through all these things, that despite all those obstacles, we have a friend in Jesus who will help us even when humans discourage us, even when we feel close to failure, even when we are overwhelmed by the odds.
Great is your faith. Great is the faith we can have if we are willing. Amen.